Welcome learners and we are going to continue with semiconductor devices part 2. So let's continue our topic. In this particular part you will be able to understand what are intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors. You will be able to make out what are the two kinds of extrinsic semiconductors that is n-type and p-type semiconductors. As discussed in the previous part, the semiconductors are those materials whose energy band gap is of the order of 0.5 electron volts to 3 electron volts. These materials have conductivity lying within the conductivity of the conductors and the insulators and it is this particular property which makes them really special. Now on the basis of their kind, they are classified as intrinsic semiconductors and extrinsic semiconductors. The intrinsic semiconductors are pure elemental semiconductors such as silicon, germanium, etc. Extrinsic semiconductors are impure semiconductors. By the word impure, we mean that over there we are going to add an atom of something else inside the material. So an impurity or a dopant is added to change the conductivity. Such semiconductors are known as extrinsic semiconductors. Let's go into details of each one of them. To begin with, let's talk about what are intrinsic semiconductors. As the name suggests, an intrinsic semiconductor is a pure elemental semiconductor. To explain how does this semiconductor works, let's move on to the boat. Let's consider a silicon atom. In a silicon atom, the outermost shell has four electrons. These four electrons are bound to the nearby set of four electrons. So we have a combination of all these silicon atoms nearby and each of them is bonded covalently to the adjoining silicon atom. Now over here in the lattice each one of them is covalently bonded. Now due to thermal excitation one or the other electron jumps from this. Now this electron which jumps creates a vacancy. To understand it better, let's move on to the slide. Now over here, when we look at the slide, this is a large collection of silicon atoms. In this case, over here, a vacancy is created. Now this vacancy at site A is filled by an electron from this site. As soon as the electron jumps, from this to this, the vacancy or the hole moves from this position to this position. So what we see in figure C is that the hole shifts here while the electron comes here. So it has led to movement of electron from one point to the other and thereby giving conduction. This particular vacancy over here now triggers another electron from close by to cover up that vacancy. So as seen in figure D, the electron from C jumps to the position at B and the hole is created at C. This is how the conduction takes place in an intrinsic semiconductor. Now these intrinsic semiconductors which are pure elemental semiconductors, we have described that they have got four outermost electrons and at low temperatures no bond is broken which means all the electrons are tightly bound within the lattice. But as the temperature rises these electrons because of thermal excitation lead to some kind of breakage in the bond and they are let loose. The moment one or the other electron is let loose it leaves behind a vacancy or a hole. 
So in case of an intrinsic semiconductor, there are always equal number of electrons and holes because each time an electron is created for conduction, there is a hole created simultaneously. Now thus, in a given semiconductor, there are two types of charge carriers. One of them called the electrons and the other one are called the holes. In a given intrinsic semiconductor, the number of electrons and the number of holes are always equal because they are created because of the thermal excitation. So it is the thermal energy or the temperature of the given system which is leading to the formation of these electrons and holes. In general, since most of the electrons are tightly bound, there is a very less amount of free electrons and holes available at a particular temperature. As the temperature rises, the number of free electrons and equally the number of holes increases. Thus, the resistivity of a pure intrinsic semiconductor decreases with temperature. In general, the resistivity remains too high or else the conductivity remains too low to have any practical device made up of an intrinsic semiconductor. Thus, we need to change something here and there to make the conductivity in such a way that it can become suitable for a device. Some of the basic properties of intrinsic semiconductor are that they behave like a perfect insulator at zero Kelvin, that is absolute zero. They have extremely small conductivities at room temperature, the electron hole pair is generated primarily due to the thermal energy and that's why they have very low intrinsic carrier concentration. For example, germanium at 300 Kelvin, which is supposedly a normal room temperature of 27 degrees Celsius, has as many as 2.5 into 10 raised to the power 19 charge carriers per meter cube. As the temperature increases, the conductivity increases and thus the resistivity decreases. We can say that the resistivity has a negative temperature coefficient. That means unlike conductors which have a positive temperature coefficient, which indicates that as the temperature of a conductor is going to rise, its resistivity is going to rise. Unlike that, in a semiconductor, there is a negative temperature coefficient. That's a contrast in the property of a semiconductor in comparison to a conductor. So as the temperature increases, the resistance of the semiconducting material shows a decline. Now, the basic limitation of a semiconductor intrinsic in nature is with its extreme low conductivity. And thus, for an electronic device, we cannot design with such a low conductivity and thus we need to have a different kind of semiconductor which is of a practical use. So let's understand the practical used semiconductor which are known as extrinsic semiconductors. Let's talk about extrinsic semiconductors. A pure semiconductor when doped with some impurity, by the word impurity, we mean that in the crystal lattice, atom of some other element apart from silicon or germanium is added in that basic lattice. And that particular atom is known as an impurity or a dopant. Usually group 3 or group 5 elements are added. As shown from the periodic table, it is clear that some element from group 3 or an element from group 5 will be added at different places inside the lattice. Let's understand this process of doping. Whenever you have a crystal lattice, what we do is from so many silicon atoms, one of the silicon atoms is replaced by either the group 5 element or a group 3 element. The atom which is added is known as a dopant and this whole process is known as doping. A semiconductor with impurity or dopant is known as an extrinsic semiconductor. 
In case of an extrinsic semiconductor, the conductivity increases much larger than a pure intrinsic semiconductor. Let's understand how the conductivity in case of an extrinsic semiconductor increases by adding this impurity atom. Let's consider the case of an n-type semiconductor. An n-type semiconductor means that in the lattice we have replaced one of the silicon atom by the phosphorus atom. This phosphorus atom being pentavalent in nature has five outermost electrons. Of these five outermost electrons, four electrons are used in bonding with the adjoining silicon atoms. One of the electron, that is the fifth electron, is left without any bond. This free electron is now responsible for the conductivity because it is loosely bound. Unlike all other electrons which are tightly bound in the bond, this particular electron is loosely bound and thus forms a free electron which is free to be a conductor. So now the conductivity of the whole crystal has changed drastically because of the addition of this particular phosphorus atom. Let's understand further. So now what we have done is, the first step is that we have added a pentavalent impurity such as phosphorus, arsenic, antimony, etc. The fifth electron which remains free is suitable for conduction. Now since the semiconductor is now rich in electrons, it is called an n-type extrinsic semiconductor. The pentavalent impurity atoms are called donor atoms. In this particular type, the majority charge carriers are electrons. It doesn't mean that there will be no holes available. There are some minority carriers also in the n-type extrinsic semiconductor. These minority carriers, that is electrons and holes, are created because of thermal recombination process. Now the thermal excitation leads to some stray electrons breaking here and there and creating electrons and holes just like the intrinsic semiconductor but their number is too small. The majority of the charge carriers in case of an n type semiconductor are the electrons. Let's move on to the next type of extrinsic semiconductor which is known as p type semiconductor. A p-type semiconductor is created by adding a trivalent impurity into the silicon or the germanium lattice. So for an intrinsic semiconductor, we choose a particular lattice and then we add the impurity which is a group 3 element. Now in this p-type semiconductor, due to the presence of this group 3 element, let's understand how the whole process of conductivity happens. Now what we have done is, in this silicon lattice, we have added a trivalent impurity called boron. Boron being trivalent in nature has three electrons in the outermost shell. These three electrons get bonded with the adjoining silicon atoms while one of this silicon atom remains unbonded. Now this silicon atom invites the electron from any of the adjoining atom thereby forcing the electron from some adjoining atom to jump here. As soon as this electron jumps over here, a vacancy is created over here. Now this vacancy further invites another electron and thus what we observe is that a hole moves from here to here and so on within the lattice. So just like N type, in case of P type, the hole moves from one side to the other side. So let's understand how we create a P type semiconductor. What we have done is we have taken a silicon lattice and in that silicon lattice we have added a trivalent impurity like boron, gallium, indium, etc. The deficiency of one of the electron creates a vacancy or a hole. This makes the extrinsic semiconductor P-type 
and it is this hole which is traveling from one end to the other end. This particular type of extrinsic semiconductor is called as P type extrinsic semiconductor and the majority carriers in this P type semiconductor are holes. Now what we have learnt throughout this particular discussion is that there are two distinct kinds of semiconductors. One of them are intrinsic semiconductors and the other are extrinsic semiconductors. We have two distinct kinds of extrinsic semiconductor, N-type semiconductor and P-type semiconductor. Thank you.